Thinking like a lawyer. In this video we will teach you how to think like a lawyer, specifically how to solve simple legal problems. The method that we are about to teach you will be useful not only for solving simple legal problems that you might encounter in your personal and business career, it will be particularly useful for solving the problems that you will be working on in tutorials for the rest of the semester and for answering the problem style questions that will be on the final exam. So the particular method that we're going to teach you is the IRAC or ILAC method. This is a method that is taught to first year law students to show them how to solve simple legal problems. So the ILAC method, I-L-A-C, stands for Issue, Law, Application, Conclusion. It's a four-step process. Step one, you identify the relevant legal issue. Step two, you identify the relevant legal rules. Step three, you apply the rules to the facts. And step four, you reach a clear conclusion. So the best way to teach you this method is to work through an example. So here is a very simple legal problem. Section 30 of the Offences Against the State Act 1939 provides that a suspect can be detained by the police for questioning at a police station, a prison, or some other convenient place. X is detained and questioned in a police car for a number of hours. Is the detention lawful? So we will use the IRAC method to solve this simple legal problem. The first point to note is that we do not jump to conclusions, we do not begin with the conclusion, so you should not start your answer with yes, the detention is lawful, or no, the detention is not lawful. Instead, the first step is the identification of the relevant legal issue. It's usually a good idea to express this issue in the form of a question. So the question here is, was the detention and questioning of X in a police car consistent with Section 30 of the OATS Act? It's a simple, straightforward question which will then uh, guide you and focus your efforts in the actual problem-solving exercise. So that's the I in the IRAC method. The R or the L, R for rule, L for legal rule. In this section we set out the relevant legal rules that we're going to use to solve the problem. So here, based on what we've learned in uh, earlier uh, modules in this particular topic, uh, there's at least two relevant legal rules. The first is the literal rule. According to the literal rule, we should always begin by reading a legal text literally with words and phrases given their ordinary and natural meanings. We should, wherever possible, uh, provide some kind of authority for the statements we make about the law. So that should be either a legislative provision, so a section from an act, or if it's case law, uh, a relevant case authority. So here we know that a case that uh, is authority for the literal rule is the case of Fisher and Bell, which is the flick knife case that we looked at in, uh, in an earlier module. The other relevant legal rule here is the class rule. So here we state the class rule as clearly and concisely as we can. An exception to the literal rule is the class rule, where two or more specific words are followed by a general word. The general word is limited to the class created by the specific words. And here the case authority, according to the textbook, is DPP against Farrell. You'll note that we've made no reference to detention in police cars anywhere in this section. We are simply uh, setting out the legal rules that we're going to use to solve the problem. It's in the next section, the A, the application section, that we actually start to refer back to the facts of the problem. So how does the literal rule apply in this particular situation? Well, applying the literal rule, a police car is not a police station and it's not a prison, but it, in a literal sense, can be a convenient place. It's certainly a convenient place for the police officers. However, applying the class rule to the phrase a police station, a prison, or some other convenient place, we see that we have uh, two specific words followed by a general word. So the specific words are police station and prison, and the general words are other convenient place. So a convenient place is not interpreted literally. Rather, it is limited to the class created by the specific words. So the specific words police station and prison uh, both refer to a type of building, so a convenient place, according to the class rule, must be a type of building. 
and that gives us our conclusion. Our conclusion, nice, clear, concise, and it's the answer to the question that was raised in the issue section of our answer. A police car is not a convenient place within the meaning of the OATS Act. The police are in breach of the OATS Act. So that's an illustration of the IRAC or ILAC method. Issue, rule, application, conclusion. We would like you to use this approach whenever you answer a simple legal problem uh, for the rest of this subject, whether it's in tutorials or on the final exam.